I know you know who I am. I am the fairest of them all. Oh yes, I am Snow White. And I am waiting for Prince Charming. But long, long time ago, there were a people who were also waiting for someone special. They were waiting for the Messiah. Someone who was going to come and save them. Now, we know that I am a fairy tale princess and Prince Charming is definitely a major fairy tale. Not that I'm bitter, but this was a real story and it happened long ago. Today is the first day of Advent and we are celebrating hope. We're celebrating the fact that the light of the world was about to be born and was born. We know him as Jesus. Let me read to you what it says in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. Now Isaiah was an Old Testament prophet a long, long time ago before Jesus. And this is what he said. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Now, on Advent, we celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ to earth, and we wait expectantly for his return. I want to read to you because when he came, not everyone received him or believed him. I want to read to you from John chapter 1. So listen up. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Wow, boys and girls, the world was waiting for a great light. They were living in great darkness and Jesus came and they didn't even recognize him. That has happened to some of my princess friends. They suddenly were transformed and looked completely different. Not until the prince found this special slipper and found the foot that fit right exactly in it. Now, Christians believe that Jesus is the one that was promised and he has come to bring us life, light, and hope. So today, we are lighting the hope candle, the first candle of Advent, because we have received hope in Jesus Christ and we have the hope of seeing him again someday. So, you don't have to be wishing and hoping for Prince Charming. Nah. We're waiting for Jesus Christ. But he already is born in our hearts if we believe. 
So let His light shine on this first Sunday of Advent. God bless you, and I hope to see you again some other time. I'm here in Orlando, and you know what that means. Yeah, I'm going back home to Disney World. <laughs> Bye. I'm wishing, I'm wishing. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm not going to lie. 2020 has been brutal. I mean, Thanksgiving for many of us, plans had to change. Um, it's just been an intense year. If ever we needed a reminder, if ever we needed a time to stop and remember that we have a great hope, it is now. Now, people, now. For those of you who might see this in the future, this is the year 2020. We have been uh, enduring a pandemic which has basically changed the way we do everything. And yet, and yet, we are starting Advent. We have begun the celebration and the preparation for the celebration of the coming of Christ, which is the greatest hope and brings the greatest hope to humanity and to each individual, to each family. So here I am, and I want to read to you really quickly from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, this is the verse that gives us the definition of faith. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about we, what we do not see. Did you hear that, peoples? Peoples? Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. I'm hoping for more than just Prince Charming, but I am hoping um, for brighter and better days. I'm hoping we can see the other side of this pandemic and together be able to celebrate again closer in person. But in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, let me read to you the chapter right before that, chapter 10, verse 23, and listen to what it says. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Just like Snow White said, Israel was waiting, longing, grieving, mourning, awaiting that Messiah, that Savior, that person that was going to bring them life and light and victory over darkness and oppression. He came and they did not recognize him and they did not see that his lessons were far greater than political uh, or kingdoms or things like that. And right now, I believe God is showing us lots of lessons. And this verse that says so well, let us hold on, let us hold on unswervingly, unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. People, I'm going to tell you the truth. I've swerved. I've swerved. There have been moments where I have been swerving all over the place. Have you been swerving? <laughs> but this verse reminds us to hold on unswervingly to the hope, to the hope that we've been given because he who promised is faithful. I've heard so many promises in my life. I'm sure you have. I've probably even made tons of promises that I didn't or couldn't uh, really come through with and I'm so sorry if you're one of those people that suffered that <laughs> on my behalf but um the truth of the matter is our God is faithful he is true and when he promises and what he promises will come true and will come to pass it's not always the way we want it to or when we want it to but it will come to pass he will deliver us even from this 
So grab unswervingly, grab on unswervingly, not to the left, not to the right. Ah, this year has been like swerve, pivot, pivot, pivot. But grab unswervingly onto that faith that you profess because he who promised is faithful. We have hope, people. Christ has come and Christ will come again. And in the meantime, he will be with us through his Holy Spirit helping us to continue having hope, have hope, hold on to it unswervingly. And now my beloved little sister and her husband are going to sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Now I've got to warn you people, they're not like gothic, they're not darks, but this video is darks. <laughs> they're they're rock and roll but they're not darks but this is darks but 2020's been darks so i guess it's apropos all righty listen think of how israel felt it might remind you of how you feel right now or have felt at times during this year our light will come have hope O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel.
And now get your candle ready so that we can light the candle of hope. Are you ready, Ian? <laughs> yeah, fire. Let's light the candle of hope. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever. Now glorious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone by thine all sufficient merit raise us to thy glorious throne our hope And now, a prayer by my brother and my sister-in-law. Bienvenido a la Casa de los Albaranes. We are blessed to pray for hope this Advent. We ask God to use what is said and done to bless us and remind us of the real meaning of the season. We will start with what is said in Joshua chapter 1, verses 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Lord God Almighty, we pray this day for strength because we are going through times that are tough and would feel like quitting. Bless us with the vision to see the best of things to come, wisdom to make the right decisions, faith to know that you are walking with us every step of the way. We close with Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. We give thanks to God for hope, for He is our forever shining light. Amen. Amen. 